you mentioned the game plan a few times, and I'm really curious about this. Is the game plan looking at the course and saying, I'm going to hit driver off the tee here, I'm going to hit three wood off the tee here, I'll probably hit a six or seven iron to the green. Is is that game plan or is game plan, I'm going to keep the ball low? What's, um, what's a game plan? Both. So certain holes like, okay, a little dog leg to the left. If it's downwind, you might be able to carry the dog leg and take advantage and hit it up there. But you're going to say, I'm only going to try this if I got a decent amount of downwind. Otherwise, I got to hit the ball over here, but there might be bunkers out there. So if it's, if it's 275 to carry the left bunker and 290 to the right bunker and it's into the wind, well, I can't carry this left bunker and I can't get it to the 290 bunker. So learning that, yes, when the wind is in this direction, I need to hit it over here. If the wind's in this direction, I can, so it's, you got to be prepared for whatever situation is dealt with. You can't expect the weather to be perfect every day. Right. So when I go map out the golf course, I want to see, I want to see even aggressive lines and not aggressive lines based on if I have a 30 mile an hour downwind, why would I not want to take advantage of a, of a hole if I have the right conditions? But if I'm not prepared to play it that way, then I won't trust it. So does your, and, and, Feel free to cut me off if you don't want to get into nitty gritty details, but does your game plan include, okay, the example you just gave, options? I mean, options. ahead of time you say, okay, I'm going to, if I have downwind, I'm going to go over this. If yep. I have wind in my face, I'm going to go this way. Yep. If I don't have any wind, I'm going to go down the middle. Yep. So when you have a game plan that's kind of like, it's almost like having three different game plans based on the conditions. And game plans based on situations. If I'm in the lead, I may want to play that hole a little differently than if I'm three back of the lead. So not every hole has situational stuff, though. But, like, number um, – trying to think here at reflection. Number uh, – What kind of situation? Number trying nine to here. Okay. If I had to eagle that hole to win, if I had to – Take it out over the water. I'm, the shorter hole, uh, i got to go right if I have to eagle it. Right. So we got the bunkers right here in the middle of the fairway. Now, if I got a one-shot lead going into that hole in this last hole, <laughs> down the left I'm side. I'm going left. <laughs> I'm going to lay it up. Like, yeah. So number nine at Reflection Bay, perfect example, gives you different options. So number number one at Reflection Bay, no options. You better hit it to to point A, and then from point A you need to go to point B and you need to execute that. If you're like dealing with a like, whoa, I don't know what to do here. If your intuition, if your intuition is confused on what to do, air conservative. Get in the, get it in play. Now I, I know you, maybe you'd say that to everyone, but I know your game from watching you and talking mm -hmm. to you and others and stuff around that know you very well. And and someone might say, well, that's easy for you to say. You can air conservative because you have a, an elite short game. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have an elite short game that doesn't allow you to err conservative, are you still erring conservative so you can avoid a big number? My advice is get a better short game. And I'm being <laughs> serious. Like you don't have to be the best athlete in the world to have a good short game. So that's why in golf, if you want if you want your handicaps to be lower, you don't have to hit it better. You have to score better. Mm -hmm. And we all agree in that. Now you can't hit your driver out of bounds. You can't hit your driver in the desert all day. Right. You got to hit your driver in play. But if you want your handicaps to go down, you got to score better. And you score better by using shorter clubs 100 yards and in. So when I say conservative, and Eric, Eric, I, I know if Eric Dud watches this, he'll appreciate this, but he was always after me, Craig, give yourself chances. Hit the fairway, hit the green, give yourself putts. He, Eric is a numbers guy. If you hit 14 greens and you birdie 28% of the greens you hit in regulation, boom, you got four birdies right there. But Eric keeps those stats. So Eric knows. So, so if I can, if I miss fairways, I'm going to probably miss greens out of long rough. Now I'm not giving myself opportunities. So my number one goal is I have to give myself an opportunity to score. I'm confident in, like, I feel like uh, probably the biggest asset in my game are my driver and my putter. 
And those are two good assets to have. But if I drive the ball well, I'm constantly in offense. And if I'm in offense, I'm going to give myself lots of chances for birdie. Doesn't mean I'm going to make them, but that's our goal is I want looks. Keep giving me looks. In the U.S. Open, that's oh, yeah. premium more so oh, than other, yeah, yeah, other yeah. tournaments, right? Because sure. the rough is ridiculous and the greens are hard as a rock. And you... So if I miss fairways and I can find a way to make par, I did my job. If I miss fairways and I don't make worse than bogey, I did my job. If I miss fairways and I make doubles, I'm going to have a two-day tournament.